what is up hard rock and metal fans so pranav and i thought we'd come back with the second video we had so much of fun doing guns and roses that we thought we'd do something for iron maiden and a little bit different where we thought we'd pick out our top 10 tracks from all across their entire discography the 10 tracks that we absolutely love so without further ado i'm going to invite pranav to share his top 10 after which i will share mine uh, so hey everyone, uh, firstly thanks a lot to Rohan for so graciously having me back again on his uh, YouTube channel and today we're going to be uh, counting down the top 10 Iron Maiden songs of all time right from the first uh, self-titled album till Senjutsu and before we start a very sad day for Iron Maiden fans as uh, Paul Diano or his original name was Paul Andrews passed away at the age of 66 and uh, he played a huge role in the first two albums of uh, uh, Iron Maiden which is the self-titled album and Killers. He was got into the band by uh, Doug Sim uh, Sampson who was the drummer back then and even though, the, even though he left out on a sour note from the band, um, he went on to have an amazing solo career and even towards the end of his uh, life he basically would do shows on wheelchairs. Uh, even after having a deterior uh, deteriorated health so may his soul rest in peace and uh, you know this his legacy shall carry on forever and on that note let's begin the top 10 Iron Maiden songs of all time at least according to me so number 10 for me would be Dance of Death this is from the title track uh, in, the, in the year 2003 and this was uh, Janet Gears and Harris who wrote um, this song and it starts off with a very slow intro which leads on to a full-blown heavy metal track, classic Iron Maiden style and uh, the one thing that I love about this song is the acoustic sections, the slow sections in the start that really give it its feel. Um, number 9 would be The Pilgrim uh, from the album A Matter of Life and Death in uh, the year 2006. Again, uh, Steve Harris and Janet Gers partnership of writing and it talks about the Mayflowers who had come to the US in the 17th century looking for a better life and uh, this was a song where you know when I heard it for the first time the intro was something that I really wasn't a fan of but when this song really picks up it gets into this really dark evil sounding riffs which uh, really take the song to another level. Uh, number 8 which is a classic and uh, a song which has one of the best instrumental sections of Iron Maiden, at least I feel personally of all time, um, is Phantom of the Opera, which is from the self-titled album again. It is where Steve Harris uh, wrote the whole song uh, completely and the guitar harmonies as we know what Iron Maiden are known for, which, uh, you know, it's their classic signature sound. Uh, and it was basically a lot of in instrumental breaks uh, and prog rock writings and um, you know something that even Dream Theater was inspired by and we all know how that band turned out you know so Phantom of the Opera definitely one of those really cool uh, different sounding tracks especially for that time uh, number seven which I would uh, put on is the Book of Souls uh, it has a very good acoustic start and it leads to some amazing changes in the song and a very good uh, sounding album I would say uh, all thanks to Kevin Shirley who produced it and um, that is number 7 for me number 6 would be The Days of the Future Past from their latest album Senjutsu it is written by Adrian Smith and Bruce Dickinson and it has this uh, really cool uh, evil Arabic sounding intro. I guess I'm a huge fan of those kind of songs. So most of my list would be diverted towards that kind of a vibe. And um, again, some really good songwriting, of course, by the, the master himself. Um, number five, I would say, is a song that is uh, one of my favorite songs of Iron Maiden. Uh, it's called Fear of the Dark and many many people who have heard Iron Maiden have definitely come across this song at some point. Um, it is the title track of the album name and uh, this is the time where Adrian Smith wasn't there in the band. This is just before 
uh, even Bruce Dickinson had left to start off his solo career for a bit before he joined back. And it is an amazing song, which again has some really cool uh, slow to fast changes, some really cool uh, screaming by Bruce Dickinson. I mean, he left a mark just before he went. And um, this is, is one of those songs that talks about the phobia people have of the dark. So some really good songwriting and some, um, you know, many, many fans, many people can relate to it because many people do have a, pho- a phobia of darkness. So number four is uh, Gangland, which is uh, Number of the Beast from the, uh, from the album Number of the Beast. And uh, Adrian Smith uh, and Clive Bow uh, wrote this song and there was a debate whether to uh, put this on the album or no. Uh, it was either this song or Total Eclipse that was going to go on and uh, on the B side of Run to the Hills and uh, it's something that they still kind of regret I don't know why because for me Gangland is an amazing amazing track and surely it will be on my top 10 number 3 for me would be Genghis Khan uh, which is an instrumental track and an absolute banger of an instrumental track many guitarists uh, have been inspired to take on that particular riff that starts off at the one minute uh, 55th second mark and um, it's a a song that talks about a Mongolian emperor who went on to conquer most of the world in the 11th century at least the world that was known over that time and uh, one of the riffs in fact is still to this day a debate whether uh, Papa Roach copied it in the song Last Resort uh, at the 1 minute 55th second mark so you know that's the kind of impact it had on so many instrumental guitarists I feel for me this is my favorite uh, instrumental track of Iron Maiden of all time after Phantom of the Opera of course alright number 2 would be Number of the Beast which is the title track again written by the legendary Steve Harris it was after a nightmare he had had watching uh, this movie Damien Omen the second and he went on to write one hell of a song which went on to be a classic Iron Maiden track Uh, I mean talk about how nightmares can really turn out uh, some really really good songs right anyway moving on to number one which is a song that every Iron Maiden fan or even sometimes non Iron Maiden fans can you know really relate to it's a song that I was introduced to, I was introduced to Iron Maiden because of the song and uh, no song could come on top of it, obviously. It is The Trooper, uh, one of the best, uh, you know, of Iron Maiden, even Spotify says so, it's number one over there as well. Uh, The intro right up to the chorus, that particular uh, riff that, um, you know, starts off and takes this whole song to another level and Bruce Dickinson never ever disappoints, right? So, uh, this is from uh, Peace of Mind and it is again uh, written by Steve Harris, what a genius, who went on to write um, one of my favorite, favorite Iron Maiden songs. So, that's it from me and uh, this is my top 10 Iron Maiden songs of all time. I hope you have some of the songs in that list too. Alright, thank you so much, that's it from me. So let's get into it. What would be my top 10? Well, to kick things off, I'm going to begin with the debut album at number 10, Phantom of the Opera. It is such a dynamic track. It takes you on such an epic journey and I absolutely love this track. So this comes in at number 10. Number 9, for those who know me, know for a fact that I am a fan and I do appreciate the Blaze Bailey era. And Sign of the Cross is no exception. I think it's the standout track on the X Factor album. Very similar in structure to Alexander the Great, but it has a very dark tone that actually works with the way in which it crescendos into the chorus. So this comes in at number nine. Number eight. Guys, if there was ever an underrated track, a forgotten track, a track that I wish not just more Maiden fans were aware of, but more metal fans in general, is this one. The very last track on Virtual Eleven, Como Estas Amigo. How are you, my friend? Translated, obviously, into English. But what a track it is. Guys, trust me, just give it a listen. You will enjoy it. It is an epic track, and Blaze's voice works so well on this. So much of emotion. 
So this comes in at number eight. Number seven, the big, loud, heavy song, The Trooper. Hands down, what a rocker this is. I mean, anytime you go, no matter how many times you've heard it, this comes on the speakers, no matter where you are, at a live concert, a tribute concert, or even at a pub or anything, you know you're just going to headbang to this track. So The Trooper comes in at number seven. Number six, what I consider to be the best ballad type song Maiden has ever done. And I absolutely love that solo that is, you know, towards the latter part of the song. Wasting Love off the Fear of the Dark album. Excellent track. Something to absolutely enjoy. And Bruce sounds amazing on this one. You know, and uh, much kudos, you know, to Dave Murray and Yannick Kurz for how they play on this track. So this comes in at number six. Number five, The Wicker Man. Yes, I know. I I know a lot of fans, you know, have issues with this, especially when you look at uh, being a fellow fan of Judas Priest as well, because we all kind of recognize that opening part of the riff. But that being said, The Wicker Man is one hell of a concert song. I mean, the minute the song plays, you know how everyone is just going to lose their minds and get crazy about it. But The Wicker Man is awesome. And that comes in my uh, at number five spot. Uh, top five songs we're getting into now number four another track of uh, brave new world uh, just as the wicker man blood brothers wow i mean the first time i heard the song i was floored with it i mean what a way in which it's constructed the way the melody works the way the orchestra comes in the way in which it sort of you know builds and builds and builds and takes you to these more mellow parts to these really high points these very dark spots as well and then finally bring it up to this massive peak you know towards the end of the song so blood brothers comes in at number four number three one of the two most epic tracks that any iron maiden setlist has to have fear of the dark what a way in which it begins with that melody and i will agree with most fans being an old school fan myself the live version is far superior of the best of the beast album to the actual studio track simply because this is one of those rare times when a track works so well in a live setting so the live version is something that I thoroughly enjoy. That comes in at number three. Number two, Hallowed Be Thy Name. I mean, need I say more, guys? I mean, for all of us Maiden fans, we just know that no matter where you are and whatever kind of top 10 you have, Hallowed Be Thy Name is going to be on there. Okay, it is just a done thing. And this is obviously the closing track on their third and, you know, epic album, The Number of the Beast. But Hallowed Be Thy Name, you know, start to finish, absolutely mind-bending stuff you know dave murray adrian smith you know they just own this and kudos to steve for really creating this entire track as well you know being the main architect and we'll leave it at that i know there's a bit of controversy lately about some of the things about the writing but let's leave that out right now number two hello be thy name and my number one has been from the very beginning and nothing has ever changed this number one for me is wasted years off the somewhere in time album i love this song it is my definitive iron maiden song i will always hold this in the highest regard and i was so pleased you know a while back when i did get to see maiden and they played this song i mean i cannot tell you how you know joyous i was feeling at that point because you know it's a song which on the face of it might seem it's a song about regret but when you actually pay attention to the lyrics and the way in which the whole thing works you realize it's actually a song about saying never mind what happened let's look to the future let's look to the present and let's be all we can be and let's enjoy everything let's enjoy life right so that comes in at number uh, one for me thank you guys so much for listening in i hope you like what uh, pranav had put as his top 10 i hope you like what i put as my top 10 let us know what your top 10 is in the comments below thank you always for your support and we shall catch up with you soon take care guys and rock on